In the previous video, we talked a little bit about master nodes and worker nodes, but let's dive into these. So a master node, a master node, and you also see the name control plane. So you, you'll see these interchanged a little bit, and that's why I wanted to bring up both these. So what exactly is the master node? Well, we have a, a little architecture diagram on the right, but before we jump into that, let's take a look at some key features. So one, the master node or the control plane, they handle the API requests. So anytime that you're using any version of Kubernetes, let's say you're using like 1.17 or something like that, or 1.18, that's all managed on the master node. So when you actually interact with Kubernetes, you're interacting directly with an API and that API lives and exists on the master node. Another thing that it does is it has etcd. And what etcd does, it's a key value store for all of the cluster data, everything from the containers to the pods to the deployments. Again, we're gonna go into what all of those are, but every single thing that happens with the Kubernetes cluster in general, it's all stored in etcd. Now, another thing is you have a cube scheduler. And what the cube scheduler does is it watches for newly created pods and selects a node for the pods to reside on. So for example, Let's say you have two worker nodes, and we're gonna jump into worker nodes in just a minute. But let's say you have two worker nodes and you have a bunch of containers and pods on one worker node. So this worker node, it's pretty full. Maybe it's at like, you know, 80% capacity or something like that. What the cube scheduler will do is it'll look for other nodes that have less of a workload and it'll shoot those containers over there. Kind of think about it like a load balancer almost, like an application load balancer. And then we have worker nodes. Oop, actually, I'm gonna go back here and we're gonna look at the architecture diagram before we jump into worker nodes. So what I wanna show is on the left, we have the control plane, aka the master node. And then on the right, right up top, we have the cloud provider API. And then we have these nodes. So these nodes are actually the worker nodes. And this is essentially how an architecture looks. You have your master nodes, you have your worker nodes, and they're connected. So now let's take a look at worker nodes. So first, it's where all the containers, pods, and deployments live. Now we are gonna jump into, again, pods and deployments and stuff, but just think containers right now. So it's where all of these containers live. They all reside on the worker nodes. You also have a queue proxy. And what the queue proxy is, is it's a network proxy that runs on each node in the cluster. So think about that just like your, your network administration, essentially. And then you have container runtimes. So container runtimes, it's what actually runs the containers. Now let's think about this for a second. We have this diagram here on the right, but when we think of containers, we think a lot like Docker essentially, but there are so many different other container runtimes out there and Kubernetes supports some of these. So it supports Docker, it supports container D, it supports CRIO and any implementation of the Kubernetes CRI. Now, Diving into all of these would be a course in itself or a module in itself. So what I would recommend is definitely check these out. But what I do want to just pretty much nail down is like, you know, there are a bunch of different container runtimes. Here's this graph here of all a few different types of container runtimes. This isn't even all of them. And what I want to get across is that you don't need Docker containers for Kubernetes. You can use a bunch of different runtimes as well.